Episode 11, The Funeral. Um, the story continues with my grandpa. My grandpa, he was a very good man. And I think he was also realizing, recognizing that he was getting older and kind of not having like a huge family. I really think he was worried about us. And I could tell that he was worried about me and my marriage. He loved the babies. He was so good to them, so kind. Never had like a harsh word, never was annoyed if they cried or were wild or would break something. He was just so sweet. But he didn't see Troy that much anymore. Um, my grandpa had a stroke. And at the time, I was traveling back and forth to the hospital um, with the babies and just really kind of running around trying to take care of everything. And we were really worried about him after the stroke. He was a really strong and determined man. So he would work hard on like getting better and being able to do a lot of things again. But I think he was just realizing that he was getting up in age. And he was worried about me with Troy. Troy didn't come over to visit and we lived like right around the block basically. He didn't visit grandpa. He didn't come check up on him. Grandpa at this point really couldn't go to meetings anymore. He wasn't well enough. So he did phone hook up a lot of times and Troy didn't stop by and visit. Even if we dropped the kids over there to so that my mom could watch them, Troy really didn't like hang with my grandpa. And I think it was a really big disappointment to my grandpa because he really liked this guy and he felt like, he had gained a son, and then as soon as we were married, there was no connection anymore. And that was really sad. But also, I'm putting on a front because here I don't want to, like, worry my grandpa. And so I'm just pretending everything's fine, everything's great. So then Troy gets privately reproved. And I'm, at this point, just really kind of relieved that it was a private reproofment for the sole reason... Um, that it wasn't going to affect grandpa. Like grandpa didn't have to know about it. Um, on the other hand, you know, I felt like, wow, nobody knows, like we're going all the, through all the stuff and I wasn't allowed to talk it. So I did have somewhat mixed feelings, but for grandpa's sake, for all the stress that he'd gone through already for that aspect, I was relieved that it was a private improvement so that grandpa didn't have to know. And it wasn't really sh long after that my grandpa got really, really unwell again. And it was going toward the end. And I never really knew how bad it is when someone dies like of natural causes, so, so to speak. But it took like days to weeks. And it was around Christmas time. So we kept calling hospice and hospice didn't have any nurses to spare. Um, they were all gone. We couldn't get any help. And so I stayed over at grandpa's with the babies. We slept there so we could help mom to help take care of dying grandpa. Troy, really nowhere to be found. But I, I just kind of accepted a lot of things at this point. And I was just like, that's just how he is. Um, and, but I was over there with the babies spending the night. The babies all like made beds on the floor and kind of camped out. And then it was during the week that grandpa finally passed away. And it was a traumatic experience because he didn't just die instantly without pain. This was like a struggle. He he had the death rattle, which I had never known about. And the last words that he said to me when the last thing that he spoke said that he was really worried about the girls in Boko Haram. And if you remember that, that was um, a bunch of girls that got kidnapped by a terrorist group. And that was on his mind. That's what he was worried about as he was dying. And that really sums up like what a good person he was. He was so sweet. And looking back on his life, I feel so bad that he even got involved in with the Jehovah's Witnesses because in a lot of ways, it kind of ruined his life. It really broke his heart 
when after his stroke, he was housebound and really couldn't go to meetings anymore. And he, he saw people in service and they like crossed the street and skipped his house and didn't come by and visit. A lot of people didn't visit. And he was very lonesome for company. Um, and another thing is like, we took him to one of the memorials and he was the oldest member of the congregation who gave everything to the Jehovah's Witnesses. And not one elder came to greet him at the meeting. And that really bothered me to see it. I just thought, where is the love this man has given it all? But in, in some way, he was kind of blacklisted after like everything that had happened. And he even said, Grandpa said, if I had been disfellowshipped and reinstated, it would have been better off for me than had I, um, you know, been blacklisted because you can't shake it. You can't shake that reputation. It's so, so sad. Um, so he, he died and I was like, mom and I were in a frenzy because here we really never actually expected grandpa dying. It was awful. It was just so scary too. You know, he was like our rock and I called Troy at work and I said, look, I have to get the coroner. I have to like get all these things. Cause at this point it's kind of just like mom and me that live nearby and we got to arrange all this stuff. So could you please pick up the babies? Cause I don't want them to even see that grandpa had passed. Cause grandpa was in the, in the room in his room and closed the door. And so Troy came and got the babies. And so we had to do a bunch of stuff. Um, we had to like arrange for grandpa's funeral and we had to go to the funeral home. And I think it was the next day. And I said, look, I need to leave the kids with you and I need to go to the funeral home and make arrangement. And a sister texted me and said, we made food for you. Could you please pick it up? And that was so sweet. And we're like a wreck. My mom and I are a wreck. So we're going to the funeral home. We're in shock. We're making arrangements. And then we go and we go to the sister's house to pick up food. And she's just being really nice. Like she was a really good friend of mine. I, I do care for her. And we're picking up this food. And it was like maybe, let's say, 15, 20 minute drive to get it. Um, and she asks us in for a minute and gives us a drink and just kind of wants to encourage us. And every time Troy watched the kids, I was a nervous wreck because I'm thinking like, he hates doing this. He doesn't do a good, like he doesn't do well with them. Um, I need to get back home, but like, it's kind of unique circumstances. My grandpa just died and we're responsible to make arrangements. And so finally we're like driving away from the sister and Troy calls me and I'm thinking, okay, I'm like kind of on my way home, but it's going to be like 20 minutes. Plus I have to drop my mom off. So maybe 25 minutes. And I pick up, the phone thinking maybe something's up with the kids. Maybe he has to ask me something. And he is screaming in the phone where I am and why I'm taking so long. And, and I just like move the phone to the other side. Cause I don't want my mom to even hear like that. This guy is like screaming at me after we just went through so much trauma and I'm just in shock. And I, I get home and I'm like a wreck, a nervous wreck. Cause he was like so, so angry at me for not being at home with the kids. And at one point later on, the therapist even said to him, you know, you're not a babysitter. These are your children too. And you act like you're punishing her whenever you watch the kids for a little bit. Like I didn't really have a lot of time to myself or you know, if it wasn't for mom, I probably wouldn't have gotten anything done. Thank God for my mom. But like he, how he treated me just like after my grandpa died, it was horrible. So we're trying to make all these arrangements for the funeral. And, you know, we had everything arranged and I go early with my mom and like not all the kids, but I had two kids with me and he was supposed to follow because I had to get to the memorial talk at the kingdom hall, like a little bit earlier since we're like the, the family member. And so I'm, I'm like, where is he? Like, why is he not here? It's just so weird. And like, how about you like 
you know, you support your wife and, and, and the kids. We were so close to grandpa. This is like a lot to go through. And he's he's not there. It's getting closer to the memorial talk, like the funeral talk or whatever, um, that it's about to start and Troy isn't there. So I text him, I'm like, Where are you? Where are you? Like, we're all sitting in the front and where are you? And he's like, Oh, well, I was having like car trouble, so I'm just gonna stay home with the kids. And I'm like, um, no, how about you come, like, get a cab or something? And he's like, nah, it's all right, I'll just stay home. So I'm like, what the heck is happening? Like, are you kidding me? Like, you can't stay home. Like, and actually his family, like, his extended family came from out of town as well and was there. And here Troy's not showing up. And one of the elders walked in and he's like, where's Troy? And that was like the elder that was on his judicial committee. And I'm like, I, I, I guess he's not like coming. And the elder just looked at me like, what the hell? And he just like rolled his eyes because he's like getting used to these antics kind of. And I just like started bawling. Like it was like the elder and he was a really, really nice elder. So at this point, one of our mutually good friends, he's so awesome and kudos to them they're also out of the religion like yay funny story with that one too um i had heard that an elder had left and disassociated himself from this specific congregation but i had moved at this point and i'm like oh i wonder if it's them i wonder if it's them but how do you find out? You don't, it's really hard to find out if someone's still in a cult or not, because if they're not, like, it's kind of awkward. And I, I never got disfellowshipped or disassociated. I kind of just faded. So I got a Google phone number and this is a good trick. You can get a Google phone number and you can pick a completely different area code. I think I picked New York. <laughs> and or like walk hill or something funny and I texted this elder that I knew really well and I said hey are you Pimo because only people who are like gone know what that means and he said yes I am and now I want to see like who is this and I was just so excited I was so excited so I'm like it's me it's me and then we figured out that we're all like leaving the J dubs. So big party. Hooray. I'm so excited because I, I love the family. I love the wife, especially if you're listening, you know who you are and I adore you. <laughs> but anyways, at the time we're still all in, this is a few years ago. And this particular friend said like, this is so weird. He's not going to like, Troy's not going to come to this funeral. I'm going to go pick him up and the kids. And I'm like, well, by the time you get there and then come back, it'll almost be over. They're about to start. We can't wait. Like, what's happening? And I was just a wreck. So this sweet, kind, considerate brother went and picked Troy up and brought him to the funeral. And Troy walked in like nothing ever happened toward the end. And it was so awkward, too, because... We're all supposed to sit like in the first row and, you know, missing in action was Troy. It just was such a mess. Like, it just was so awkward. And here's something else I kind of have to say about the funeral memorial service. If you have ever gone to a memorial service held by Jehovah's Witnesses in the Kingdom Hall, they use this as a way to preach to the visitors that aren't Jehovah's Witnesses. I had noticed that a little bit, but I always thought it was kind of weird because a memorial service is for to remember that person. And I did notice it, but I just thought like it's those particular like speakers that held the memorial service that chose to do it that way. Um, and we just kind of wanted to honor grandpa and talk about him. And especially like Jehovah's Witnesses oftentimes have no education, are really like not doing much besides preaching and going to meetings. It's like in that cult life that you're stuck in. And grandpa kind of broke free a little bit from that. He was a little bit of an independent thinker in the way that he dared to go to school and get a degree while also pioneering 
he was kind of lucky because he didn't need a lot of sleep. So kudos for him. While we're all like exhausted, he never was. And he read a lot. So we wanted to honor grandpa. And honestly, like his memorial service was about him. And after the memorial service, we kind of noticed like, especially two elders that weren't really that nice to begin with totally didn't talk to us anymore and it felt so weird and we couldn't figure out why like why are they mad it's really that soft shunning that goes on you're not being fully shunned but if you go a little bit against the grain of what they want you to do you feel it like people exclude you or people like you know don't talk to you or greet you you just feel it so mom and I especially we felt like what is up why are they we didn't know the term at the time but we felt like that they soft shunned us in our congregation and um I we really later figured out it's probably because we actually had a memorial service for grandpa and you're really not really supposed to do that you're supposed to use that as an event to basically recruit new people and really that's what preaching is too when you're preaching you're recruiting people you go from door to door you as an individual are convinced that you're bringing them like the truth about god and the bible but really if you strip it bare it's really recruiting for new people and even recently i saw the jehovah's witnesses on one side downtown and Scientology was on the other side doing the exact same thing handing out pamphlets like I mean different ideologies same methods you know and really the whole structure of it is so incredibly similar um and I did think that when I was watching the Scientology show with Leah Rimini as well like while we do all that even though we that's not our belief the way they handle things the way they shun and everything was similar So I'm going to stop the episode here for today. And tomorrow we continue um, with another new episode. Thanks for listening.